Welcome to a new video about BGT differential amplifier circuits. This is our second example. In this example, we will look at the similar example as we did in the first example. Now we will replace the ideal current source by our resistor as shown here. We'll see that shortly, step by step in our calculation, also verify these in SPI's simulations. So, in this example, we have the following circuit. You see here now again RC, two RCs here, and we have again this differential voltage excitation. Two DC voltage sources, VCC and VEE. Now, in addition, we have here a resistor instead of an ideal current source. So, this is actually our first version of a replacement of this ideal current source in example number one. Again, we have two. BGT MPN transistors, you see that Q1 and Q2 here. The values of the components for this circuit are shown here. So we have now RX, that is this uh, resistor here, which is also called the tail current resistor, 9.65 kilo ohms. The Q1 and Q2 are again matched, so they have exact same beta, they have exact same VBE in this case also. And the early voltage for both of them are infinite, so we don't bother about the early voltage in the next example. We would like to calculate in this case again the balanced differential mode voltage gain, the balanced common mode voltage gain. In addition, we will also like to know what the common mode rejection ratio is, which is given by this, but then for the balanced case. Once we know A and B, the question C will be straightforward. Okay, let's look at our solutions. First calculation, now before we move on, let's now designate also the currents here. We have the collector current IC1 here and IC2 here. And we have also the emitter current 1 and emitter current 2 for the Q1 and Q2 respectively. We also know that there is a current here, which is then Rix, that is our tail current source. This will be splitting in two exact uh, halves. So actually what you get is that if this is, for example, 5 milliamps, you get here 2.5 milliamps and there are also 2.5 milliamps in DC. We also know that we have a voltage between these two nodes, which is the base to emitter. So we have now the VBE, in this case specifically for one. But you see also that this is the exact same also here. So this is just a connection. Okay, now let's see what we need to do. First, a DC analysis from this circuit. If we consider DC analysis, the AC sources, so the V1 and V2 will be shorted. So they are DC grounded. That means looking at this and starting at this point and then ending at the same point, which is then ground, of course, you get this from Kirchhoff's voltage law, or you can also say the mesh current analysis. The VB1, VBE1, plus the current here times Rx, which is just Ohm's law, plus this VEE must add up to zero. Now, what we want with this first analysis, that we want the Ix, because everything is known here, so we can replace now and then express the Ix in terms of the other parameters, we have the minus VE minus VBE1 over Rx. So everything with the voltages goes to the right side and you divide by Rx. Remember that VEE is minus 20. So what you get is minus minus 20 and then minus 0.7 over this 9.65 kilo ohms. Now this is what we have and this will add up to exactly 2 milli amps here. Okay. This is actually, by the way, similar to what we had in the first example, where this uh, was an ideal current source, also 2 milliamps in this case. This is just to make the comparison uh, nicely between example number one and two. Now, since Q1 and Q2 are matched, that is actually this notation, Q1 is equal to Q2, that means they have the same uh, biasing, so they are biased at the same potential, and that means the following, that the transconductance of the Q1, which is GM1, is equal to the transconductance of Q2. This GM1 and GM2 are determined by the IC1 and IC2. They are exact same because IE1 and IE2 are exact same because they are splitting here into exact halves because of the symmetry of the circuit. Now, if we now define a new parameter, just GM, without any one or twos, that will be then GM is equal to GM1 is equal to GM2. And then we can calculate the transconductance for the complete circuit, which is necessary for these voltage gains for A and B. 
So we can now use the formula and then just use one of the currents for the collector. So I see one in this case, just a choice over this thermal voltage, which is 26 millivolts at room temperature. Now, IC1 will be, again, this is the standard formula we know. So we go beta over beta plus one times IE1, which is actually slightly lower for the collector current than the emitter. Now, when you now substitute the, also the tail current, we have here IX, which is splitting in two. That's actually in uh, two exact uh, values. And then substitute now the 150 for beta and also the IX, which just determined two milliamps. You get there 0 0.9934 milliamps. So slightly lower than one milliamp. So if you say, I want to have a really fast calculation, you can say the IC1 is just half of the IX. You get, of course, some error, but this is, of course, also valid for most cases. Now, then we have the following. The GM will be then, since we know that the IC1 is uh, this much uh, milliamps, we divide it by the 0 0.026 or 26 millivolts for our thermal voltage. And you get now here 0 0.038 two Siemens. Okay, this is now the transconductance, which has, which is actually a conductor, so this is now the unit. Now we can go to the first calculation about the first uh, question, A, balance differential mode voltage gain. Now that is given by VOD over VID, so the difference between these two nodes over the voltage applied between these two nodes. That's shown here. Now minus GM, because minus is that is due to the sine inversion. So when you measure it between these two nodes, you get the inverse of the nodes between these two. So what you have is then just substitute the values. And also one in this case, because there is no early voltage, remember that was the first case in example number one, we only have RC as our load resistor, so, so to speak. And we have now minus 382 as the gain voltage gain for the balanced okay the common mode voltage gain this is very important now this is given by this expression this is this can be proved by uh, drawing the complete small signal uh, model which recognizes this is this expression looks similar to that one there are two changes by the way one thing is i started with the single ended expression for the common mode voltage the reason for that will be sh clear shortly and there is this minus GMRC also here, but it is divided by 1 plus GM times the 2 times this RX. This is because this circuit will be split in half. And in order to make that symmetry, you get 1 RX to the left side, 1 RX to the right side. So we actually have then 2 times the RX for left and the right hand side. Because if when you combine them together in a parallel combination, it must add up to the original RX. That is really clear when you draw the circuit in a small signal model. But again, getting back to this V01, because you measure now at this node only when you apply a differential uh, input voltage. That's actually shown here, or you may actually make it common mode, to be honest. I have to correct myself. So that means when you... Uh, so when you apply here and there at the same value, because that's common mode input voltage, you will measure the VO1 or VO2, that doesn't matter, and that will be given, that will give you the single-ended common mode voltage gain. Because for this is for single-ended output. But we know that the VO1 is equal to VO2. So you can actually get an expression which is just directly VOC, which is the common mode output voltage. So that means VO1 is replaced by VOC, and then you move from the single end to the balance, which means that the single end voltage gain for the common mode is the exact same as the balanced common mode voltage gain. So the formula stays the same. Now we need to just substitute down the values for GM, RC, and also two times RX, again as discussed shortly. We have now this expression. This is not a zero, because in the first example, this was infinite because of the ideal current source, because the output impedance was of that current source large or infinite. So in this case, we have a finite value. So we will also have some gain. That is now minus 0 0.517. So almost half common mode gain. It means when you apply at these 
two nodes exact same voltage you still measure some gain here or some voltage there that means you get almost a uh, half gain this is of course not what we wanted but there is some gain because of that common mode operation now next and the final one is the balance common mode rejection ratio that is cmrr for short now that is just a ratio between the balanced differential mode voltage gain divided by the balanced common mode voltage gain in absolute sense now you just substitute the values we just determined you get now is 739 and in dbs that is 57.4 dbs this is not a really uh, large value for most op amps you get approximately an over 100 db so that is really standard but this for this example what we have okay let's now move on to the results so let's first collect the values we just determined for uh, uh, a and b and c and also the dc collector current this is now the simulation results just considering the dc analysis left side is a differential mode and the right hand side is a common mode what do you recognize the ix is almost 2 milliamps which is calculated was exactly 2 milliamps so there is a slightly increase there so this three microamps larger what we also see is the ic1 and ic2 are exact same similar for actually everything is also valid for common mode operation but the ic1 and ic2 of course is a little bit larger than what we actually have calculated so we will see what that means in our analysis this is a very small difference so i don't expect too much difference in our gain and other parameters okay let's go to the simulation results for the ac analysis or the frequency response using the body plot this is the gain and now for this case is differential mode uh, operation this is the circuit and what you see is that the low frequency gain is 51.508 db there's also a cutoff frequency here, approximately 15.9 megahertz but that is just for completeness here so if i now go from db to the scalar value i need to use this formula and that is 376 which is close to 382 so that is fine so we can say this is perfectly fine now going to the ac analysis now for the common mode operation then there's a funny actually a jump here so this is just real due to the high frequency in, uh, effects we haven't discussed and covered so this is the common mode operation this is the circuit you see the common mode input and you measure at one of the uh, outputs so it is vo1 or vo2 so this plot is specifically for vo1 now what you see is that the low frequency gain is minus 5.786 dBs and high frequency is approximately and high frequency gain is approximately 0 dB. So if I go to 10 gigahertz, I get almost 0 dB. Okay, what you also see is that that is uh, nice to see that the low frequency gain converting from the dBs to the scalar value will be 0.51 for the absolute value and this is close to what we have calculated so this is also a very nice result now getting the next step is the transient response so we would like to see what's happening in the time domain this is a circuit again for the differential mode operation these are the plots you see the collector current one collector current two the tail current you see that actually the kill current is slightly uh, fluctuating but it is approximately 2.003 milliamps or let's say 2 milliamps the vid in this case is 10 milli volts peak this is the vo1 which is one of the outputs and vo2 this output and this is the differential mode output vod which is between these two nodes also these two nodes now what do you see now let's first calculate then the gain here and then compare it to as we have uh, with, with what we have calculated the peak peak value for the red one is the differential mode output voltage is 7.426 volts peak peak and the input was now 10 volts 10 millivolts peak so that means 20 millivolts peak peak and when you calculate that it will be then minus 3.71 now slightly or maybe a little bit small than what we have so this is uh, not a big issue because of some parameters we haven't covered or taken into account so this is fairly okay for this case now this is the plot for the transfer response for common mode operation this is the circuit and these are the plots for the currents 
tail current, the input common mode voltage, in this case 5 volts peak or 10 volts peak peak. That is done purposely in order to have some convenient value of the output. If, if you take also this, for example, 10 millivolts, you get a very small value and then maybe the calculation can be a little bit uh, off or you, you, you can have a, a slight uh, error in your calculation. So take this large enough. Of course, don't go with the non-linearity and then you will have some better results. I again look at the VO1 or VO2, it doesn't matter because VOD here or VOC action must be uh, set, this is almost zero. So you can say the common mode voltage is output voltage is zero, but that doesn't mean anything. So you need to look at the VO1 or VO2 and this peak peak value here will be then calculated and will be then 5.127 volts peak peak. So the, the, the just a difference between 12.622 and the 7.4. 95 over the common mode input voltage which is 10 mini, 10 uh, volts peak peak this is another result so you see here minus 0 0.513 why is this minus let's see that because the common mode input voltage goes like this, this is the blue one and the pink one is inverted that's also the same for the green one so it doesn't matter which one you take okay that means and looking at the calculated value this is fairly close so we can say this is nice. All right, this was our second example about the BGT differential amplifiers. We have discussed what this tail current resistor RX uh, does in this case in a more practical uh, situation as the current source. It has an effect we have seen on our common mode voltage gain because it is not infinite uh, zero anymore, I mean. And that means the common mode direction ratio will be some finite value, will be not infinite anymore. Now, I hope this clarifies the situation even more for this BGT differential amplifiers. We will continue in the next examples where we also use the current mirror and also some more advanced current sources there to make the circuit more um, stable and ide uh, close to ideal. If you have any questions, comments about these examples, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in other video.